Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Fullerton, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about frequency and period. Our objectives include calculating the frequency and period for an object moving in a circle at constant speed, but we're also going to find that frequency and period are going to be very important quantities, physical quantities, that we'll use through the rest of the course. They'll be especially important when we get to our waves unit. So let's start by talking about frequency. Frequency, which gets the symbol F, is the number of revolutions or cycles that occur each second. And really you can think of it as the number of activities, the number of anything that occur per second. For example, if I can eat two donut holes in one second, my frequency of eating donut holes would be two per second. The units then of frequency are one over seconds per second, which is also known as a Hertz, with the abbreviation capital HZ. Frequency, lowercase f, the number of activities, cycles, revolutions per second, units or hertz. Similarly, we could look at period. Period is the time it takes for one complete revolution or cycle or activity. The symbol is a capital T and its units are seconds. If I can eat two donut holes per second, the time it takes to eat each donut hole would be half a second. The period would be half a second. So what we're going to find is frequency and period are very closely related. Period is just one divided by the frequency. And alternately, frequency is one divided by the period. If you know one, you can very easily find the other. Let's do a couple sample problems. A 500 gram toy train completes 10 laps of its circular track in one minute and 40 seconds. Well, right away, I know my time is going to be 100 seconds. If the diameter of the track is one meter, that means its radius is 0.5 meters. Find the train's centripetal acceleration, centripetal force, period, and frequency. All right, let's start with centripetal acceleration. We know centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. And if I look at that, that V squared, the V, we don't know that yet, but we could find it. Remember that speed is distance over time. And in this case, our distance is 10 times around a circular track. So 10 times the circumference or two pi R divided by the time. So that's going to be 10 times two pi times half a meter, our radius, divided by 100 seconds. And when I do all that, I come up with the speed of about 0 0.314 meters per second. Now I can use that over here in my centripetal acceleration equation. So we have our speed squared, 0 0.314 meters per second, squared, divided by our radius, 0 0.5 meter, and what I get up, come up with then, is 0 0.197 meters per second squared. That must be our centripetal acceleration. All right, we've got that part done. Next up, we're asked to find centripetal force. We can do that in a similar manner. Centripetal force is just mass times centripetal acceleration. Notice it gives us our mass in grams. Our standard unit in physics is kilograms, so we have to convert that to kilograms first. 500 grams, I can do that one in my head. That's 0 0.5 kilograms times our centripetal acceleration, which we just calculated, is 0.197 meters per second squared. So half of 0.197 meters per second squared is going to give us our centripetal force, which is right around 0.099 newtons. Excellent, one more done. Now we come to period. Calculate the period. Well, period is the time it takes for one complete revolution, one complete cycle. And if we do one, 10 laps in 100 seconds, it takes us 100 seconds for 10 laps or 10 revolutions. So our time for one revolution, one lap is just 10 seconds. 
Finally, we can go on to calculate our frequency. If we know period, we can find frequency is just the inverse of that, 1 over period, or 1 over 10 seconds, which will be 0 0.1, and 1 over second is also known as a hertz. All right, fairly straightforward. Let's go on to our next sample problem. All right. Alan makes 38 complete revolutions on the playground roundabout in 30 seconds. If the radius of the roundabout is 1 meter, find its period, frequency, the speed at which Alan revolves, and the centripetal force on Alan. All right, well, we'll start with the period. Period, the time it takes for one complete revolution. Well, if it takes 30 seconds for 38 revolutions, our period then is just going to be 30 over 38 or about 0 0.789 seconds. Next, we're asked to find the frequency. And once we know period, of course, frequency is just the inverse of that. So frequency is 1 over period or 1 over 0.789 seconds, which becomes about 1.27 hertz. All right, going a little further then, find the speed at which Allen revolves. Well, speed is distance over time. And let's see, as far as distance goes, he's ma he makes 38 complete revolutions. So 38 circumferences, 2 pi r, in a time of 30 seconds, which will be 38 times 2 pi times our radius of 1 meter in 30 seconds. And I come up with the speed then of about 7.96 meters per second. All right, finally, we're asked to find the centripetal force on 40 kilogram Allen. All right, to do this one, centripetal force, centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, so this is just mv squared over r. Allen's mass is 40 kilograms. We just found his speed as 7.96 meters per second. And that's squared, v squared, divided by our radius, 1 meter. And I come up with a centripetal force of around 2,500 and 30 newtons. All right. Hopefully that gets you a great start on frequency and period. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone, and make it a great day.